Okay, so this video is going to talk a little bit about standard curves. So let's start with just a general definition of standard curve. So it's a type of graph in which multiple samples or standards that have known properties are first measured and graphed. This graph can then be used to determine the same properties for an unknown sample by interpolation. Okay, so that's just a general definition of a standard curve. Let's look at a couple of specific examples. All right, so one example you will encounter, and we're actually going to use this week in lab, is a standard curve that determines the relationship between the absorbance and concentration of a substance. So you also did this in Bio 104 when you looked at the relationship of the concentration of bromphenol blue to the absorbance of bromphenol blue. Okay, another example of a standard curve is one in which you determine the relationship between the molecular weight of proteins and the distance they travel in the gel. And we'll actually do this a little bit later on in the semester. All right, so let's go back and take a look at this first type of standard curve that we talked about. So here is a specific example. So in this case, we took p nitroaniline which is um, a chemical that's yellow in solution, and we made various concentrations, and we measured the absorbance in a spectrophotometer. All right, and that gave us then this relationship. So it's a linear relationship. We can use a line of best fit and determine the equation for that line. Okay, you might recognize this also as Beer's Law, in which the absorbance equals the extinction coefficient times the concentration. But note that this is really y equals mx, so therefore the extinction coefficient is going to be the slope of our line. Okay, so once we know the extinction coefficient, all right, so we know our equation, we can then plug in and solve for an unknown sample. So in this case, we have an unknown, we measure the absorbance, and then we can use the equation to solve for that particular concentration. Okay, one thing you might want to note when I wrote this out here is I didn't include the units. So we always want to include the units on our extinction coefficient. So in this case, what would the units be for that particular extinction coefficient? All right, well, remember the extinction coefficient is the slope of the line, so that's the rise over the run. In this case, absorbance actually doesn't have any units, so the units for our extinction coefficient are just one over the units of concentration. So it's one over micromolar or micromolar to the negative one. Okay, you might remember in chemistry that instead of calling it an extinction coefficient, you actually measured the molar absorptivity, which is basically the same thing as an extinction coefficient, except you would have to convert this into molarity units. All right, in order to report a molar absorptivity. All right, the other thing you might want to just think about is what would the figure legend say? So we're going to have some practice making figure legends in the next lab, but some things to keep in mind. Remember, A, it's a standard curve of p-nitroaniline in this case, and B, if you put the unknown on the graph, then you're actually using the graph to determine what this unknown concentration is. So keep those two things in mind when you're thinking about your figure legends. Okay, a couple of other things we just wanna note. The first is that the unknown must be within the range of the standards. So you don't want the unknown out here somewhere. We really only know the relationship holds true over this range. So we always want our unknowns to be on our standard curve. The other thing is to always double check that your data are linear throughout the entire range. So you don't want to use a linear regression line if the data isn't linear um, over the whole range. Okay? All right. Let's take a quick look at just that second example of standard curves that I gave you. So what if we're looking at the molecular weight of proteins on a gel? So in this case, we're actually going to run a lane of standards. So we can actually purchase uh, proteins that have no molecular weights and run them on our gel. And 
This relationship is then actually the distance traveled in the gel, all right, by the log of the molecular weight. All right, so the log of the molecular weight is um, our known, and then we measure the RFs, and this generates our standard curve. Okay, so we will do that a little bit later in the semester, and we'll give you more details then. I just wanted to give you another example. So that's the basic idea of standard curves with a couple of different examples. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in lab this week.